Hello and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host Kristen and today we have Kelly Jones, the owner of Kiss Looms. Today she sells knitting looms and now weaving looms. This is their 10th anniversary for Kiss Looms and I'm so excited to have her on today. We've had a little bit of a hiccup. I'm hoping that this is a good take here. So hopefully we'll have some people join on. I'll get Kelly on the air and we'll be able to go. Uh, thank you so much for your graciousness in uh, waiting on this broadcast today. I have the pleasure of knowing Kelly for the last several years and getting to know her at different fiber fests and going out to dinner with her and her husband and just um, enjoying each other's company and getting to know um, the things that they sell and them as people. So it's been really great. They're handmade looms in their shop at home and um, it's uh, pretty cool. They've got a great community. All the people who um, know each other at KISS uh, on their KISS community page chat daily uh, they really help each other if you are a absolute beginner loom knitter or an absolute beginner uh, kiss loom knitter um, you are absolutely welcome and there's so much helpful information out there if you're looking for something to help you go from needles to a loom and you may have um, even thought that the knitting looms the regular knitting looms have caused some stress on your hands or something the kiss looms are gonna be your answer I know that people who go to knitting looms who have dexterity issues they um, there's actually ones Joanne even our assistant here uh, on our team at Good Knit Kisses she has she extensively uses um, kiss knitting looms and those have really helped her she has zero pain with them and um, so it's it's great and she has um, worked with needles and crochet before and so when you are on um, knitting looms trying to transfer stuff from the needle on over if you used to needle knit and then you can't anymore for dexterity issues, then the Kiss Knitting Loom actually really solves your issues and you can translate the patterns. I'm so glad to see everyone jumping on. We've had so many issues this morning. Thank you for your graciousness. And now all of a sudden, or I had nobody, now it says we have about 30 people on. So I don't even know if that number is even right. Facebook, ah, oh, Facebook today, What is? what have you been doing? If you're joining me on the YouTube replay or the Facebook replay, welcome. Most people join me later. They can't always join me live, and this is kind of an oddball time for me. So I'm so glad that you're here today. It's awesome. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, wherever you're from. I'm going to invite Kelly into the broadcast her here, sort of in my studio on the screen, and I'm also going to be showing some of her products. I have got different ones to show you. So um, if you need to re, uh, if you're joining me live and you don't know much about what I'm talking about, once we're done, you can always catch the replay and go back. I did say a few um, kind of housekeeping things about it. Also let you know that we have links in the description, but we'll also be putting them down below care of Joanne Gay, who is our assistant here and on the team at Good Knit Kisses. I'm so happy to have Kelly on. She is a dear friend. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy to say I can really truly call her a friend. She really is. I've enjoyed working with her over the years and just really just getting to know and chatting with her, meeting her, her with her at Fiberfest and her husband and um, meeting their kids and it's just great. So I'm so glad everyone is here. Um, we're going to invite Kelly in. I'm hoping that we don't have an issue again. We're having Facebook issue stuff. So I'm not really sure what's happening. So really hoping it works. Hey, Ruth, welcome. She loves her kisses, her kiss looms. And uh, Ruth helps out at, um, at in the Kelly's uh, group for kiss looms. And we have Kathy. She's in here somewhere. Hopefully got back in here. Hey, Heather. Hey, Elizabeth. Hey, Mary. <laughs> Susan. Hi, Lorianne. Uh, Kasid, hey, hey, I'm breaking up, huh? I think we're having Facebook, true Facebook issues today. I don't think it's, it's not on my end. I'm not having any issues. I'm on my internet here. Um, so I'm not really sure why, but anyway. Um, hey, Alicia, how are you? Hey, Ruth. Um, yeah, a true friend. That's, that is true. She really is. She's very genuine and I love it. Robin, hey, welcome. Hey, Liz. Yes, we're back again. Hey, <laughs> Karen. Yes, loud and clear from the UK. Well, I'm so glad to know that Ruth can hear me and see me. Um, we'll figure out this whole Kelly thing. She's awesome and a dear, but unfortunately, if we have techno technology issues, it's going to affect this broadcast. <laughs> and we'll have to schedule another day. Um, so that just really, to put it quite frank, sucks. 
Um, so yeah, we'll have to do this another week. It looks like she's popping in on Messenger and telling me that there's an issue. I'm going to hit the button one more time. Lord God, please help her get on and get this technology <laughs> working well for us. Um, I want to, um, yeah, we can answer a few questions if you have um, the ability. I have, I want to show a few things and we'll have her on, but you know what? I'm just going to kind of preemptively show a few things. I am sad about that, but let's go ahead and, um, and talk and I'll wait and see if she comes on. Let me flip the camera here. All right. So let me get the, oh, that was my lighting fixture making that awful noise. Now I got to crank it back up. Okay. How is that? Is that better? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, I have to get this down here because I can't even see in the viewfinder. So that's not good. All right. This is her um this is her weaving loom here that I'm looking at. This is the first order of business. I really want to show this to you. Uh and I was working with it today and I'm nervous because I don't really weave a lot and it's been a while. So <laughs> let's see. Uh let's see if I um if I even did that right. I'm not even sure I did that right. So I think what I do is I go over and under, over and under, over and under, and then wrap it around and then pull it through. And I split my yarn and that's not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and then go here. And Kelly's got a better video. Oh my gosh, I'm having problems all today. Okay, here we go. Don't split your yarn, Kristen. And then we'll put pull it through to the other side. This is her smaller loom. This is a 20 peg. All right. And then I go straight up and come around. And then go through here. I'm going to go over and under, over and under, over and under, wrap it, pull it through, and set it on here. And then I just take it and drag it all the way to the other side. How'd I do, Kelly? Did I do okay? <laughs> drag it through to the other side. How's that? <laughs> So this is actually a super bulky number six weight yarn. This is a softy chunky from um, Bernat. So Bernat softy chunky. And then it draws up and then it makes a square. And then once you make, I mean, I mean I'm sorry, it makes a triangle. And once you make one, you can actually make one right on top of it, disconnect them on the right side, and then crochet them together, basically slipping them through. And then it becomes like a mitered square look. It's really, really cool. You can even get the really big ones. So this is the 20 peg and it makes like a five or six inch square um, if you um, put two of them together or it's a five to six inch triangle. So you're looking at this hypotenuse edge and that's the part that goes together. So anyway, it's really cool. So this will get you addicted, I'm sure, because once you weave this up and get it connected, um, <laughs> Then, then you're done. It's really cool. And if you get the really big one, then you're just making one triangle shawl. Uh, I'm going to show you what a triangle shawl looks like in a larger piece. I have one finished here. So look at this one. Look at that. Isn't this nice? Now this was made by a friend on, um, uh, from a, another friend on, a large, on the larger loom. So um, I don't have this one here because I thought this would be a good one to show you on camera, but this is what they look like. And so this is this nice lightweight one. In Texas, this is, this is fine for winter. I don't need anything heavier than that. So you use like a five weight yarn. Um, I, I'm using a, um, a six actually, but this looks really nice. And of course, you know me and my chartreuse green. <laughs> So um, I'm going to try hitting that button one more time, Kelly. Let's see. I know I said one more time earlier. <laughs> All right. So we, oh, I said hypotenuse, Joanne. <laughs> Joanne's excited because I said hypotenuse. Do y'all want me to do that one more time? Kelly, I think I did it right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take this yarn and go around your peg. And um, so I'm going to draw this, uh, this strand through here. So what I do is I put my... Uh, I put my um, hook in and I go over the top of this one, under, over, under, over, under, 
over, did I do that right? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I did that right. Nope, I didn't do that right. I got to do it opposite, right? Mm -hmm. So I got to go under like this. Yeah, I got to do that. Here we go. Opposite, right? And then I draw it through. So there we go. So then you um, you pull it through to the other mm -hmm. side. Uh, I messed something up over here, but you get the idea. I'll have to do another video. I'm just learning this one. But that's basically what you do is you do one side and then you slide it down and then you do the next side and keep going. So there's that one. Now, the thing I want to tell you about Kelly is she also wrote a sweet little book. Look at this thing. Isn't this cute? Tiny Dots for Tiny Tots. And you make these little... Um, toys and what I used for it this was a great one for me when I was learning the kiss loom I got this small gauge loom and this is a the small gauge uh, this is a, a 30 peg uh, short loom and uh, you can uh, tighten um, or loosen and adjust here and make more or less you can make a little small amount or a large amount um, if you've never seen one before, it can be a little overwhelming. So let me show you on the dragon. <laughs> that way you can see it really, really big. This is the dragon loom. Now, um, can you see the pegs here all on the front? Okay. The pegs are rounded around like this. All right. Doo -doo -doo. And then we have a pin. Okay, so we have the pin that's behind it. So um, you've got a peg and a pin, and do you see how they're offset? What that does is it allows you to bring the yarn around the front of the peg and go around the back of the pin and around the front and the back, and you're weaving like this. You're going around and around and around and around. What that does is it creates a fantastically smooth finish. Um, but do you see how, like, there's no... there's there, like this gauge is always going to be this gauge unless I really skipped and made some crazy stuff. This reminds you of a regular knitting loom that has no change. Okay, let me get a, another loom. Let's just get this one. Okay, this one right here, if I keep wrapping around, it can't change. This is fixed, right? This is fixed. However, I can do something like take this thing that has, um, it, see how this is fixed too? This is a fixed to um, size. This is a US needle three to five, um, three to five needle. This one right here, it has this little pin board behind it. See how it's two separate things? This is the pin board, this is the peg board. And what I do is I separate this and she's got little washers on here. They're like little thin. Let me show you what they look like. Here's some bolts and here's some washers. See this little thin plastic washer? It has a thickness to it. And every time you add in washer, it makes your yarn go longer, a longer distance. And it creates, it creates a bigger gauge. It creates a, um, uh, you go up a needle size, okay? So what you do is you end up taking this off and then squeeze these in, in between here and use the same amount over here. Isn't that cool? And so it becomes, da 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 this so this is a small gauge loom okay so the small gauge loom is going to do um, this is a 60 peg there's 29 on this side and 29 on here and then seven on the ends but it can go from uh, normally like a seven all the way up to even a 12 maybe even a 15 peg loom so if I take seven washers and put them in between my pin board and my peg board that will get me a three quarters of an inch. Okay, so I can get a three quarters gauge here, even a slightly more. Um, now, if I want it fixed at three quarters, I can just use this one. Okay, so like let's say you have those old nifty knitter looms, and you wanna you wanna do stuff that's just like the nifty knitter looms. You just take this and t untighten it. Okay, you just loosen this up, and then you slide it in and you can change the size of your loom. So rather than have three looms that have, 
that have that same gauge, you can have this one. But if I want to make it go down and I don't want to use a size 15 needle or 13 needle and I want to do something in between, maybe I have a pattern that calls for like a 10, I can change the washer size mm -hmm. and put it in on here. Now, the kissers in the group are, have already noticed a problem with my loom. And I did this because I want to show, I say kissers, like <laughs> kiss, kiss loom knitters. They're, they're seeing a couple of things in here, pop quiz, what what do you see that I have not done? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you how to change them out on your loom. So like I said, this one is just like this one. Okay, it has the, it's, they're both small gauge, uh, but it's just, got, it's got more pegs on it, right? And then it has these ends here. This is a seven end, this is a one. I could even do something that's a three. See how there's three on here, one, two, three. Um, and Kelly would get that for you, not me. <laughs> Um, but um, I, what I'm showing here, what's missing, thank you, no washers on the pins on one side. And there's also one other one, pop quiz, what else am I missing? So what, what um, Ruth is saying is um, right here I've got all the, um, all the washers on this side to make this gauge um, the same as this one. Um, but I don't have it on over here. See the difference? I have a couple of, or I have one washer inside here, but I don't have the seven. So this needs to be fixed and I'm gonna show you. Also, there's this mid-span support here, okay? So because of the distance, I, Kelly has in here, there's a little bitty pin and you can see it on this one. I did this to illustrate it, see that? If I did not have the support here, this could go a little uh, wonky on you and your gauge would change. So what you do is you have to take this apart and then you would put it on, um, Oops, that's my other one I was gonna show you. I can make this bigger, I'll show that to you in a second. But you can um, you can take this off and then you put washers in there too. So let me show you how to put the washers on. So I just loosen these bolts. Okay. And then I've got this one here and I wanna loosen this bolt. All right. So I've got, I've actually got two washers. See, I even counted that wrong. Okay, so we're gonna do seven. Okay, so I insert my bolt and then I start loading washers on. One, whoops, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I'm gonna put this on, okay? Got this little comb or whatever, little pin, pin board, and then put on my um, plastic bolt, and I mean a nut, and hold on to that bolt. Screw the, screw that into place. Okay. And then I just go ahead and put this straight in. You wanna make sure your pin board is on the inside just like that, okay? And then I get it to wherever I want it. I can even move it on down, line up my pins, and then start tightening this up evenly. And then what I'm missing is this one. So then I would um, take on this one off. And then um, I would make sure that this this pin here gets filled up. I'm not gonna show it to you now because I wanna show you something else. <laughs> so, but that's how I would do it. I would just, um, I would end up unscrewing this and this. And then um, once I had that um, unscrewed, then I can take it apart and then load them on um, in this part in between. So pretty cool. So here we go. So a starter loom um, the best loom to um, start with, uh, Kelly would recommend, um, there's a couple of different ones. Like, I would say either, um, there's a couple of different ones. The most popular one I'll get to in a second. You've got the dragon loom. So if you're like, hey, I really, I like using bulky weight yarn, um, bulky and super bulky weight yarn. Like, here, here's some ideas. So Bernat Softy Chunky, that's a really good one. Um, and then it has a nice... Um, it has a nice uh, give to it. There's other, there's all of these other ones out there without going into yarns right now. Um, this is a really good one because I can slide this up and down, right? 
Um, I've got, they've got the Dragon Loom, which has 24 pegs on the hatchling, which is a small one. Okay, that's just like having, um, say, one of these, right? Except this, uh, it'll be a little bit larger gauge than this. So, like, some of these, you're like, I made baby hats on here, but it's always too small, right? Well, you could use the hatchling and make them the perfect size, and it works with the patterns that have 24 pegs. So, that would be awesome. Then, you go up to the 42 peg one, which is this one, and then there's an 82 peg uh, Komodo, and that's still a dragon limb, okay? But also, there are three end pegs. So like you see, there's, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six, so there's one half this size, okay? And so you can get the peg ends. Here's the deal, starting on Sunday through next Saturday, so Sunday, the 24th um, through September 30th, you don't need a coupon code or anything. You can get a um, any of the dragons, the non-adjustable dragons. Um, you can get any of those for 20% um, off. So, and they will they will ship to you. Uh, they will ship to you pretty fast because she's got she's got several in stock, and uh, if not, she'll make more. <laughs> But 20% off is a really good deal. Okay, these are all handmade looms. Kelly makes them herself. She's got her, she's got her love and blood and sweat in these, and and sometimes actual blood. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's she's had a couple of little uh, close calls, girl. But uh, anyway, it's really great. This is a great starter one. The next one I would say is the small gauge loom. The most popular would be the 60 because. As you saw, you can go from needle size, and I just wrote this on here last night. Um, this one is, I didn't have it on mine. Mine's older before they started putting them on there. This was 7 to 12. So the needle size is um, 7 to 12 U.S. needle size. There's 60 pegs. This is a SG or small gauge loom. Uh, there's 29, okay, there's 29 pegs on this board, and there's 29 on here, and then seven on the ends. This is what's called an end. So when you see um, the the ends, there they have these little C clamp kind of things. You can also, if you want to grow your loom, say you've got this loom and you're like, what should I get next? I love it, but I want to make it bigger. No problem. She's got ends to match. So if you want ends to match and make a big old square loom which will knit in the round, these all knit in the round, you can do this, right? So you can actually change your seven peg ends to another, I think these are 29 peg ends, and then have it um, even bigger. So this would be a really, really great thing to do. There are tons of videos by Kelly herself and also the answer lady. She's um, Kate Winslet on here, but it's Catherine Dubberly, and she has made a lot of videos, tons of techniques. Um, you can really match the um, needle patterns, and there's a ton of people who know what they're doing. <laughs> they know their stuff on their page. So uh, kiss dash looms.com there is a link we have a link for the dragon loom so if you want to go look at that there's also a um i've got a link to the book um that i was showing earlier this tiny dots for tiny tots and that was this little loom that we used and i made oh my gosh my kids loved these oh my word um i made i made a little bird that has this really cool stripe to it i made a little um or no, we made the bird. We made the bird in a different color, and then we made a little whale, and I put a little jingle bell in it, and it was like a little rattle, and we gave it to a little cousin. It was so sweet. And then we did um, the tiger. There's a little tiger thing in here. Um, yeah, this is the whale we did. So cute, right? And they they actually work up really fast. Once you get going, it it just flies. There's a little tiger in here. This one, see, with the little striping, and everything. And um, I had my my kiddo um, like pick it. And um, she picked like the oddest colors and it's so cute. Here it is. Isn't that cute? So adorable. The tiger or cat. And we did, um, she did pink and red. And I was like, these are Valentine colors. But <laughs> it's pink with red stripes. And uh, anyways, really, really cute. And you can make up your own versions and stuff. So um, I really loved it. Not that she's all about the book, but I just love this one. So that, that went together with this one. Um, so that's a really good one, especially if you want to give it as a gift. Um, but this one is the starter one. This is SG60 Peg. And then the dragon is on sale. But I also have, if you want to do 
fine gauge or even extra fine gauge, there's an FG, I mean, I'm sorry, um, yes, there's F1 and F2. This one is an F2, and it uses its needle sizes three through five. And um, now it is fixed, and so you can't change the, um, the, the width between where this setting is, right? But depending upon the stitch or your tension, you can achieve um, a tighter gauge or not. So that's why it still has a range on it. And then the F1, which is smaller, so this is three to five size, then you could get a US one to three on the F1, okay? And then there's an EFG, which is an extra fine gauge, which uses needle sizes zero to one. So um, you'll get seven to eight stitches per inch on the EFG. The FG, you'll get six to seven stitches per inch. The um, FG, so that was FG1. FG2, you'll get five to six stitches per inch. On the SG loom, you'll get four and a half to uh, four stitches per inch. And then there is the regular gauge or RG looms, um, which is gonna be a little bit bigger than this. But of course this one, you can still achieve a regular gauge. You just have to change out the washer size. She's got straight looms, modular looms, drag looms, dragon looms, and adjustable looms. But she also has what we were showing earlier is the triangle looms. And these are really great for a quick project. And um, then the larger ones, um, you can make a, a nice size, a very nice size, large triangle on them. I know that Kelly's answering questions for me. So I'm looking at some of my notes. So I'm missing some questions. So, so glad Kelly's able to answer questions today. We will have her on to do um, a more of an interview style uh, to tell us more about herself because she's really, really great. So um, let's see, the variety of looms is a lot. Um, she has a really great way of looking at the website and, and telling what you want. But if you don't know what you want, they have a great group. We'll probably put the link down below for the community. And uh, yeah, so this is a 20 peg uh, loom and then she has a 50 peg triangle, which will make, make a, a larger square. So this one will make a square that's like five inches or so. And then the other one will make a 15 inch uh, square. So you make a triangle, you, then you make another triangle on top of it, and then you're basically stitching the uh, hypotenuse here together, and then it opens up and makes a square. It's really, really cool. So um, anyway, what else do I want to tell you? Yeah, so the group is super helpful. Their admins are really helpful in their group. Um, and then we do have a link to the book if you want to click on that and get her book, and that... Um, goes on Amazon. That's a that's an affiliate link for myself. Um, I'm looking at my notes here just to see what else I need to show you. Um, I don't want to, let's see, I'm trying to find my, I had some yarn. Let's see if I can show you the wrapping. So um, this is like the wrong yarn for this, but <laughs> <laughs> so um, the pegs and the pins, so what happens is you have yarn that goes in front of the peg and depending upon the loom, this peg may be flat this way or it may be turned the opposite way and that way it actually achieves a different size. So you end up going around the back of these pins and then to the front of this, this peg and then back and forth and you can just kind of use your finger and let it go. Okay, and so that's how you weave it and then you come back through and you weave on top of it again and you um, lift the, um, uh, uh, you get the, you get a neat, and, sorry, I can't even talk. You get an even knit going across because see how it's always the same? Because if you pull tight on this, you can make your tension tighter but it's very limited as how tight you can get it. So you're, um, once you get used to it, your knitting really comes out very even. Um, sorry, I didn't prepare to do a whole big thing today <laughs> on that. Um, yes, you can weave a shawl on the uh, triangle looms. Um, you could put together a bunch of triangles or you could um, make a square, of course, by, by putting them together like that. You could put a couple of squares end on end on end and make a nice rectangle. Um, but you can make a 15 inch triangle and then put a couple of those together and make an even larger one. So she also does um, custom looms. Um, so you have, you have custom looms that she can make and she doesn't charge um, some big custom upcharge for them. Um, she's worked out the math to where it, um, it's actually more on a per peg basis and um, 
it's really it can be really affordable so if you do need a custom one i would suggest going with something she already has this would be a great one or the dragon like the hatchling or the dragon 42 um, as a starter especially because it's at the discounted rate and um, this particular one will get you into tons of patterns you can do a lot with this thing and then if you wanted to expand it it's so cool as you can just add these on you know what I mean? That's like you can't do that with other looms. So they're not only adjustable, you know, in, in modularity and moving the loom, uh, like the amount of pegs, but they're adjustable in gauge. It's a true adjustable gauge loom. You know, it's there's nobody else who does something like that. So um, anyway, it's 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 really, really cool. Um, let's see if I'm going to flip this video and chat with you. Hi. <laughs> so I hope you guys like that. I'm sure I missed a ton of stuff because I really did mean to have Kelly on. Um, let's see if there was a question. Um, oh, so Kelly was posting a nice a quote from somebody, but it's it's too long, so I can't read it out. It cuts it off. So. Oh, Ruth says, I wove five triangles and joined them together and made a shawl. Awesome. Did you use this, the largest loom? Um, if you, uh, did you use the largest loom for that to do the five triangles? Oh yeah, it looks like she did the, she did that. Thank you for the link there, Joanne. Um, yeah, the triangle, the triangle is good. Sorry, I was just reading. Someone says it does look complicated. You know, I'm probably I'm not doing a very good job showcasing it because I really wasn't. Um, <laughs> I didn't have any plans to do that today. I actually planned on having Kelly on, and we were going to talk more. So um, I'm not um, uh, I'm not ready to do that today. But it really isn't. Um, it takes a little getting used to. Um, just like anything, when you first start learning, um, once you get going, you really fly. Um, in fact. When I first started using the Kiss Loom, I was like, what? You know, I'm like, I, you know, it kind of just took a moment, you know, and I kept going and I'm thinking, this is going really slow. And all of a sudden I looked down and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I'm near where I need to bind off. Like it went, it actually went faster than I thought. Even while I was doing it, I thought it was slow. But anyway, it, anyway, it was like, what? <laughs> so it was, it was really cool. I don't know. It just kind of, it just kind of goes and the wrapping of it is really fun um to do so anyway she even has double knitting available she's done some special stuff used for double knitting um and kelly's commenting on here as well the small gauge looms and regular gauge can also be used for double knitting just remove the pin boards so you just take that extra little piece out and then you can totally just work back and forth between the long boards um it's a that's a really nice feature uh let's see um, and yeah and depending upon the um, peg ends that you have you could remove so what she's saying is if you want to double knit say you say you have this and when you're like I want to double knit on this you can remove the um, the pin boards which is this part and this part okay so you just take those out squish down your loom but also you could change out this end so this is a um, this is an end for um, for the seven so if you have another end that you could use, um, you can, um, like you could even put in one of these. You're not actually using the, the stitch that's on the end, but it would be a spacer for you. And you could achieve a, um, a smaller distance across the boards. Does that make sense? So like maybe you might not want to double knit with this big end in here, but maybe you want to do it with a, you've got this one or this one. And they just, they fit right up in there and it just works. <laughs> it just slides down and, uh, and creates that different double knit board. Cause so you could, um, see how this one would naturally look like a double knit, but you can't really do it on here because of the way, because you can't remove that extra peg board. But, um, it's like, it's like taking this one and making it look more like this. And then you could use these ends here. Does that make sense? So we have triangle looms and we have, um, uh, those are triangle looms and uh, ankle looms that are weaving looms. Uh, the triangle ones, the 20s, are super easy. This would be a great starter one. She ships it to you knocked down. It's really easy to assemble. Do you guys want to see the assembly real quick? You want to see how it comes? 
um, I can take this off. Um, I'll take off the yarn and um, we have a moment here. Uh, in fact, I'll show the comb taking off the yarn. We'll disassemble it. <laughs> Does that sound? Uh, let's see. I will flip. Oops. Got it. Thing in the way here. All right. Here we go. Oops. I'm asking y'all questions and I didn't have all my notes scrolled, so <laughs> I couldn't read it. Um, yes, and Kelly says you can always email me uh, if you need help deciding what to get. Kelly's super available and she's her customer service really rocks and she goes the extra mile. Um, don't abuse her. She's my friend. Be kind. <laughs> But really, she's she wants you to like your loom. She wants you to she wants you to make a good decision for you, customized to you. So if you know what you want to make, then just be truthful with her and be like, I don't like to make sweaters. And be like, I only like to make dishcloths. I only like to make shawls. I like to make shawls and sweaters. That's all I'll ever make. Just let her know, and she will totally help you. So let me flip this. She Okay, we're back to this. Let me get my lighting better. Okay, so what comes with the um, with the loom, and I flip this around. Okay, so what comes with the loom is a little bag, and then you get one of these. And if you recognize it, it's like a, she calls it a comb, and it's like having one of these little things here. Okay, it's like a little pin board, but it works really well for this. So you can just take it and then pick off your um you can pick off your um, your weaving so like when you're ready to do that thing where you um, crochet these together you just take off this right side here okay and then you start crocheting those together when you've got two on top of each other and you can take these off and what it does is it, it eases that tension and then that way um, you can work better with these because you know how many times have you tried to weave something or pull pull some stitches and everything else is like super tight you see how that draws up like that okay so um, i'm just going to take this completely off okay so much easier with this than my fingers right my fingers are like so big um and then what also comes are um your bolts and your bolts are going to be in there so if you see like one part has the kiss looms logo da, 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 da. and um then we have uh, your bolts. This is upside down. So I put in, she actually shipped me like the longer bolts. I like the short ones. Uh, mm -hmm. She sent me this longer and the shorter. And so this is, these are the little short ones, but they also can do an inch and a half. And let me unscrew these. You're just kind of seeing this backward and see how that one just fell right off. Okay. So at the corner of the shorter rails, your A and B, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's that whole Pythagorean theorem. Joanne is freaking out because I said Pythagorean theorem. Um, <laughs> so it has this squared connection point, right? So you have these two little twins that fit together. Okay. They're just, they're made to go together, right? Then this side over here where it goes on the hypotenuse side is, uh, has an angle on it, right? And then this one has an angle. So you've got this part that has the notch on the opposite side. Okay, and on the other end, now you see the notch go down on this side. So it goes on top over here and under over here. Okay, and then that's where your bolt goes in. And then you just put the nut here on the back. Okay, so you put this, this part in here. And then you screw the, the nut on. All right, so uh, this just kicks out. That's one piece. And then let's do the other piece. And I'm putting my finger on the back of this bolt to keep it from spinning, spinning around. So this is what you get. You've got three pieces. One, two, so here's your kiss looms. Boop, boop. Okay. One, two, three. Let's turn them all with the pins at the bottom. So see how they look? So that's how it comes. And then you also get the comb is in the package. And then you get the nuts and bolts. And that's it. That's all you need. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's not it. I apologize. Then you also get hooks. And I have, my hook has done the walking and it has gone away from me. I had another hook just sitting right here. Okay. Well, anyway, you get two hooks. <laughs> so a hook came with it and then we can, um, you can use that for your weaving. So you just 
it's all comes in this bag. I love it, um, which actually reduces your shipping too and breakage, so you wouldn't have the breakage. So this is what it comes like, and then you just take it out. Again, here's how you assemble it. Open this up. Let's assemble. I got that one. Okay, that one. That one and that. So that's how that's done. And then you put the, if I hold this together and flip it, like that, I can get this screwed in. Super easy. There we go. That's all you need. And then you got your little comb and you have your hook and your yarn. <laughs> so I hope that's helpful to you guys. Um, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Here we go. And there is a lap stand as well that Kiss has for your other Kiss looms. It holds on to your loom and you can just hold it right there in front of you. Uh, and uh, if you've ever worked with an embroidery hoop, um, it's more sturdy than that, but like it's kind of like having that. You can have it right up to you and working on it and um, super, super helpful. There's also, um, you can use the, on the, um, the big triangle loom, you can put that on an easel and she has it rigged to where, not rigged, but she has it custom made to where it actually um, goes right on that end. It's like an angled end on it and it actually sits up like that and you can um, you're like a little artist with your little easel making <laughs> your weaving. It's really, really cool. You might get really addicted to that weaving, y'all. So if you are a loom knitter, um, a really great thing to jump in would be, I would get you this little weaving loom, honestly. Um, this will be life changer. <laughs> I can imagine, this is what I imagine this for. I imagine making a square in one color. I mean, I'm sorry, I keep saying square. A rectangle in one color and then making my contrasting color above it in another um, uh, triangle. So triangle on a triangle, contrasting colors, um, make it come together at one end, open it up, make a bunch of those, and then make a checkerboard baby blanket, you know? Or maybe like a four or five color, six color blanket um, with a whole bunch of different um, color blocking. So it looks like you've got triangles and squares and everything. So it would be really, really cool, um, yeah. Anyway, so if you loved this KISS broadcast, and hopefully we can have Kelly on another time, uh, if you'd love to have her back, please share this video. <laughs> the more shares we have, the more we will know, right? Yeah, share it to your group, share it to your page, your own, your own profile, and because uh, it actually will show me how many people have shared it, so, and then I'll know. <laughs> I'm so glad you joined me. If you join me on Facebook and you did not get the notification, be sure and click like on the Good Knit Kisses page. Go check out the uh, Kiss Looms page as well. And uh, you want to hit that notification button to see first, not just follow. And there should be a little um, slider thing to be notified when I go live. If you're on uh, YouTube, click that subscribe button and be sure and click on the bell so that you get notifications when a video comes out. We've got a lot more videos coming. Um, I've got videos coming out multiple times a week now, definitely on Mondays and Fridays. So I do have another video coming out tomorrow. Um, it'll be on actually on the Our Inspirations channel, but I'm working on a couple of loom videos right now. Um, and again, if you are a loom knitter, know that just because I show it on one loom does not mean it's only on that loom. You can see it on many others. I just can't make the same thing on multiple looms at the same time. <laughs> so you can do a lot of the things on one loom that you can on another. The benefit with the Kiss looms are, you can pretty much do them all on one thing. Like this, this sucker, you can do a lot on this one. I mean, really, like just the one loom. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, uh, I'm really, really glad to be able to talk about this. 
and um, and have Kelly on. We'll just have her on another time. It sounds like everybody really wants to to hear from her, and I'm glad about that. Again, they're celebrating their uh, 10 year anniversary. Check out the sale that's going on starting on Sunday through Saturday, so the 24th through September 30th. This is 2015. And check it out. You do not need a coupon code. You just go and get a non-adjustable dragon loom, and um, yeah, dragon loom. Get the either 20 peg, uh, 24 peg hatchling, the 42 peg dragon, the 82 peg kimono, and then the three peg ends. And there you go. So um, so glad. Yeah, check out the uh, Facebook group too, Ruth. If you want to pop in uh, that uh, link, if Joanne hasn't done it already. And um, be sure and check that out. Go to Kiss Looms and you can check out all the things. I'm so glad you guys have joined me today. I hope you have a great day. Happy knitting and loom knitting and crochet. Bye, everyone.